this thing working? Is it working? Okay, good. Utilize it. I'm sorry, what? Oh my God. It's so embarrassing. Okay. Utilizing my skills as a highly sophisticated researcher, I have compiled a list of people's top 10 fears. Please feel free to count them down with me. Dogs. Loneliness. Flying. Death. Oh crap, I thought I fixed that. Sickness. <laughs> Deep water. Financial problems. Bugs. Heights. And the number one fear that people have? Speaking before a group. Now, as a small child, I'm a little ahead of myself. As a small child, I was painfully shy. And it wasn't because I was a nerd or because I was, well, awkward looking. <laughs> but I found it almost impossible to talk to anyone outside of my family or friends. And at the beginning of first grade, my teacher said, you need to tell a story about your summer vacation. And hearing my name and feeling my bony little knees knocking together, I dragged myself to the front of the classroom. I have absolutely no clue what story I told that day, and I don't remember what happened afterwards. But what I recall with razor-sharp clarity was the adorable little shoes that I was wearing because they were now sloshing in a warm, fear-induced puddle. And I gotta tell you, this would have really, really come in handy. But thinking back on that top 10 list, wouldn't you think that maybe being in an airplane crash or say falling off the edge of a cliff, or I don't know, death, might rank just a little bit higher than the fear of public speaking? So I knew there had to be really, really good explanation. So being the, the devoted researcher that I am, I rolled up my sleeves and I went back to work. <sighs> and as it turns out, <laughs> that just like our natural fight or flight reaction to danger, the, the fear of public speaking goes back thousands of years. So think about our ancient ancestors for a moment and the following four circumstances and the effect that it would have had on them. Survival depended on being part of a group, on having shelter and somewhere to hide, on being able to defend oneself from, say, saber-toothed tigers? Now, come forward again to present day. Let's look at these same four circumstances again, but this time, let's look at the effect they would have on our innate fear of speaking to a group. Being alone and being out in the open, there it is. Not having a weapon. Oops, TMI, sorry. <laughs> And having strange creatures stare at you. <laughs> now, I have had to work very, very hard to overcome my personal shyness and my fear of speaking in public. And I thought I had finally stumbled upon the secret to that problem that dates all the way back to that fateful day in first grade. However, I did not yet have the key to overcoming the fear until I received two very valuable pieces of advice. The first of which came from a very, very dear friend of me, mine who looked at me in a loving way and she said, get over it, it's not about you anyway. Huh? What do you mean? I'm the speaker. I'm the one on stage here. I'm the center of attention. Yeah, except not. You see, I had it all wrong because I was so focused on what you, my audience, 
was thinking of me when my focus really needed to be on what I could give to you? Was I successfully delivering my message to you? Was I giving you something of value to take when you left here today? Now, clearly, I am not here to protect myself from embarrassment, from shame, from humiliation, or even from downright mortification. But I stand here on this stage alone, out in the open, clearly without a weapon, with all of you beautiful creatures looking at me. Whoops. <laughs> and I have to now come to the second piece of advice that I received. And that was, no matter what happens, you will survive. Every one of you has a story. All of you have something of value to share with others. So I encourage you to rise above your fears to stand up proudly and tell your story. And remember, no matter what happens, your mother will still love you. Isn't that right, Mom? Thank you very much.